Hello and welcome back to Power Wash Simulator. Welcome back to another day when I don't feel like driving around in my car doing a video vlog because I've just detailed it, I've cleaned it, I've polished it, I vacuumed out the inside, I've wiped down the inside with leather wipes and even shampooed the interior. But, 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 driving around the Cornish country roads during winter when it can get covered in poo, I just don't feel like it. So we're basically going to do a vlog, but in Power Wash Simulator because that's just the way it is. So what do we got? Well, if I hit up specials, I've downloaded the SpongeBob SquarePants specials because I've gone through the whole game and I've been getting the Chivos. There's only one Chivo left in the base game and it's a pain in my butt. So I was like, oh, well, maybe we can get some for the SpongeBob SquarePants DLC. So click on this. Uh, I'm going to restart the campaign because I just had a little look at it just to see what the Chivo in fact was. So do a little restart and confirm and then start. Who washes the pineapple under the sea? Dive in and clean the quirky buildings and vehicles. Bikini Bottom. Ooh, Conch Street. $125. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is a power washer, boy. Are we glad you're here? We all woke up this morning to find our houses completely covered in dirt and none of us can figure out how. Absolutely nothing happened last night except for the surprise birthday party for my pet snail, Gary. It was amazing. Everyone showed up. Even the tube worms from Rock Bottom. And the sea monkeys. And Dennis. We probably made the most mess by anyone ever, but we definitely cleaned up afterwards. Or did I fall asleep and dream that bit? Anyway, our neighbor Squidward blames us. He says if, that if his house isn't clean by the time he gets home from making comedy history at the gala, then he'll do something that we'll all regret. If you clean all three, we'll give you all the Krabby Patties you can eat. I'm sure Mr. Krabs won't mind. Maybe. So let's hit start job. And here we are on Conch Street in Bikini Bottom. It is. Yep, it's pretty much like the T. Oh, we are fully underwater. Yep, is fully the TV show. So we got scaffolding. Nice. We have uh, SpongeBob's house, Squidward House, and Patrick's house. Although Patrick's house is where the Chivo is. It is. Clean the rock, <laughs> clean the hinge, and clean the underside last. So everything else needs to be cleaned, including the weather vane on the top. All right. Uh, let's see. There we go. I think the dirt came here because it wanted to. All right, that's from Patrick. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Well, we got the deep cleaner 4000 extra long extension. Let's put the long extension on. We got the nozzles, doo -doo -doo, and the soap. Okay. And this thing's pretty decent in terms of power washers. If I was a dirt, I want to live here. And I'd. Oh, it's disappeared. All right, so it's the same as before. We can clean a little bit of the rock. That's not a not a huge issue. So I'll just get the the top of this weather vane. Uh, weather vane? What is? Oh, it isn't an actual weather vane. Oh, that was like a TV antenna or something. But nope, that's what it is. Gonna need the ding though. Gonna need the ding. That's kind of interesting that we're using a power washer underwater. Uh, what is? Do we have to? Do we have to close this thing? Bonk. There we go. Probably. Yeah. It's fully filthy on the back. Right. Fine. Yeah, so the car. What happened with the car? Why was it so turbo messy? Well, we went up to... I went up to Bristol last weekend uh, to visit family. I went there with my sisters, one of my sisters from Cornwall, and we met up with my sister from Bristol. And um, it was Dad's birthday, so that was what the last vlog was about. I took some writing up there because I just finished a horror story, and I wanted my sisters to check it out because they are fully into horror writing. And uh, it was kind of interesting. I mean, I got the I got the look. It was just like because uh, one of my sisters finished like she reads very quickly. Uh, she read a story incredibly quickly, and she was like. Oh my god, what have you done? Uh, had some notes back, obviously, because that's what I asked for. It's like, I would like some notes, please. Uh, and she was like, yeah, nothing wrong with the story, uh, but I'd like just to see just a, just a little little like extra paragraph just explaining something. And I'm like, yeah, cool, we can do that. Not a problem. 
because the way that I write, uh, you can do that. You can just add extra paragraphs to things very easily. So it's a very like modulus. Writing is a very modular system. And you might say, ah, but you could use AI to write. No, you, no, you, no, you can't. No, no. People who use AI are not writers. It's uh, yes, it's a misconception. Uh, I would say, hmm, there was a there was a lady that won a writing competition in Japan, uh, and she used AI to create the work. And I'm not entirely sure how that how that actually like is even a thing. They're just like, well, yeah, no, you, you can absolutely do, do it. I think it was described as the perfect novel. And I'm like, well, hmm, hang on a minute. Isn't it just a lot of other people's novels all, all stuck together to make this one perfect thing? It's very, it's very slippery slope, but no, I found that writing on your phone, because it's in your pocket all the time, is a very easy thing. So I've got it with me. Okay, I think that's Patrick's stuff already done. With the exception of the bits we need for the Chivo. So the rock top, the rock bottom, and the hinge. So we can now focus on everything else and get the Chivo, hopefully. So you, you'll get a Chivo for completing this job, uh, but then you'll also get a Chivo for completing uh, the Patrick's things last. So that's, that's the two Chivos for this. Um, yeah, so writing. I managed to, so I managed to finish a story off in order to go up to Bristol. I, I really wanted to get that done, get to Bristol, and then have something to, to hand over to my sisters because I, I went up there for Christmas, uh, but it wasn't ready at that point. And then I came back. I was like, oh, I'm probably going to have to go up again for my father's birthday. Oh, it was actually a good time. I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. But, um, I was like, oh, I should probably get that get that story done and then see if we can get some feedback on it. Because the, the idea is to write an anthology of horror stories. Little little short horror stories, something you can read, like, one at a time as you're going to bed. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know how people would do that. Whether that would be something you really want to do before going to bed. Because some of these stories that are written are not... You, you couldn't read them out on YouTube, let's put it that way. Uh, definitely not. I wouldn't. I would not recommend trying to read them out on YouTube. Uh, I think YouTube would have something to say about it. Some of them are okay. Some of them are fairly straightforward, but some of them are definitely no bueno. So uh, yeah, because um, the first story I wrote, only uh, I've only got feedback from one of my sisters because the other one hasn't hasn't they they read at different speeds one reads incredibly quickly and one does not they're kind of like Brock and Sindri almost the opposite I mean they have similar similar tastes and similar ideas but different ways of going about things um so yeah uh one of my sisters has read the, the stories so far and says keep on doing what you're doing especially since they are from what is going on with this freaking bicycle? Do I have to go from... How much of it is hidden? This is an awkward shape. Right, let's get the awkward shapes done first. This is a very awkward shape. Wood, wood. I mean, this is fine. Get all the chunky bits. Under the saddle. Under the paddles. Probably. Alright. Uh, yeah, so I'm... Oh, under the pedals. Oh. Wait, how m there's, there's basically nothing of this... Oh, paddle. There you go. So like there's basically nothing left. Well, laugh. Um... Yeah, so, uh, one of my sisters has read... The, the first story that she read was like, I didn't think you had it in you this is going to stick me with me for a while. I'm like, that's good. This is kind of why I don't think people would want to really read this sort of stuff before going to bed. Because, like, I never went, I never meant to do horror. But it is one of those things that's fairly easy to do. In terms of, like, if you're switching from genres from things like 
science fiction. If you're going from science fiction to horror, it's a, a fairly easy step. Um, and then having been to places like Arvon to learn how to write, that that is definitely a good thing to do. Like doing an actual like short writing course, uh, even over like the course of a week. I'd recommend that to anyone who can afford it. The Arvon writing courses are not cheap. Uh, I got one as a it was a family present, so everyone sort of chipped in for this thing, and uh, ended up many years ago going there. It was actually to the Hatherley uh, site, which is a doomsday cottage. If I was a dirt, I'd want to live here too, Patrick. Oh, from SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. Um, yeah, it was in Hatherley. It was a doomsday cottage, a thatched cottage, and then we we actually. Uh, some of us slept in the house, and some of us slept in the pig pens. Um, and I'd want to live right, right down the way. Okay. It's just the, just the texts coming in from SpongeBob. And I'd want dirty little Squidward to live just next door. Oh, okay. Okay, old chum, old bean. But yeah, Hatherley, Hatherley is uh, an interesting site. So Arvon has different um, different sites around the UK. Uh, doorknob cleaned. What's the doorknob cleaned? There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so Arvon Arvon's uh, like a, a centre for uh, writing, and they they do things like uh, teach you how to write screenplays, and teach you how to do poetry, teach you how to write for kids, teach you how to write for adults. Uh, if you have like a specific need, then there's usually a course for it, and they're they're short courses over uh, over the course of a week, and they're residential ones. So you turn up and then you stay there for that time. The first time I I, I mean went to the, uh, I went I, I turned up, uh, so I turned up on my motorbike because I was running a motorbike at the time, and. Uh, the first thing they did was they said, okay, like, cool, everyone's here. It's kind of like a game show almost when everyone turns up and it's like, oh, everyone's here. And then it was a case of, right, well, we're all writers, so we're all going to go to the shop and get beer and wine. So if you if you have money for beer and wine, we'll go and get some now. And I'm just like, no, I don't really drink. I'll just have a nice cup of tea, thanks. <laughs> it's like, eh, uh, all right. Um... Yeah, I really wasn't into that sort of part of it, but turns out a lot of people who do writing uh, or go on those courses just don't get drunk, but do just kind of relax into it somewhat. I do remember, because the, the idea was that we would go in uh, and take our works, the things that we've been working on, and then we would uh, we would at the end of the week, we'd all be in the barn, which is a big old, big old barn with lots of sofas and things in it. And then we would sit in a big comfy chair in the middle of everyone, kind of like being at school, and read out our work for the class. And I was just like, yep. all right. Um, some people's work was very, very good. Uh, it's got to be said, some people's work was amazing. It wasn't all any particular genre. Somebody wrote um, wrote a story based on their experiences uh, growing up in South Africa. Some people wrote exper uh, like a story. Um, I don't even know what the heck the story was that they wrote. It, they, it was something about like a recording studio, and she spent a lot of time describing the diesel jeans this person was wearing, which I guess... Considering I haven't heard of Diesel Jeans as a brand, like before or since, I'm guessing that might not, that might have been like a regional thing, maybe? I mean, geez, if you wrote a story back then and it, it featured D2 Jeans, uh, I think D2 as a company doesn't exist anymore. Mm, okay, I think we've done as much as we can here. Uh, what do you got? Little better. But there's going to be more on top, isn't it? Yep. Is there reflections? Yeah, there are reflections. Cool. So yeah, there are there are some follies which you can fall into as a writer. What's this? SpongeBob's imagination box. Oh, neat. Um, there are some follies that you can fall into as a writer. If you put a brand in there, uh, it, like a historical brand is fine. If you put like, oh, they were smoking a pack of camels. 
It's like, okay, yeah, that, like Camels and Lucky Strike or whatever, that's going to put it into a different, like, an era, certainly. So you'll have an era... Uh, oh, it's Reef Blower. Uh, that'll be uh, an era that that story is set into, because there's brands that don't exist anymore, I don't think. Um, and that's fine, you can absolutely do that. But if you choose a brand, like a fashion brand, from now, you have to be like, well, I'm going to put that in my story, and not everyone's going to know, A, what that is, and B, uh, know its relevance, because fashion fashion's relevance is not the same for everyone so if you are writing story and just like and they were they had that they, they had the dolce and gabbana like i don't know handbag or whatever so like that doesn't mean anything to me as as the layman so uh, the reef blower is there's stuff on the back i think there is yeah there we go and the side and the top so you gotta be a little bit careful. Uh, write for an audience. For me, I'm writing for the late, for, but like specifically for, oh, uh, these are all panels, neat, all right. Uh, for me, for specifically for horror, I'm writing specifically for ladies because uh, ladies tend to read more horror and uh, murder mysteries. They really do like reading about people getting straight up murdered. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's a thrill of imagining yourself in that situation and trying not to get yourself murdered? Uh, ooh, I don't know. I do not know. Uh, there's that panel. There we go. We're doing the... we're getting the dings. We're getting the dings. Um... Oh, the little needle on the... on the uh, pressure washer is, like, bouncing around. That's kind of cool. It's a nice model. I wish you could get this model in the, like, the, the main game. Oh, maybe you can. I don't know. I've literally only just got this DLC. So, neat. Um, imagine how many friends you'd have if you were a dirt. Oh. Okay. From Patrick Star. Many more... Because at, at, at different uh, points, different percentages, you'll get the text messages will appear. SpongeBob would still be my best friend if he was a dirt. Uh, cool. Neat. So, yeah. Yeah. One of the big problems that I have, because I'm writing an anthology of short stories, is the worry that I would finish a short story, move on to the next one, and then basically write the same thing over again. I was like, I don't really want to do that. Maybe there needs to be sort of a little bit of cool down between stories. Uh, maybe I need to give myself like time to mentally cleanse the previous story out. It's kind of a satisfying building to do with these 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 uh, little panels. Get the satisfying dings. There we go. Uh, bubble stand sign. Oh, let's do the bubble stand. There we go. Bob stand container. Oh, all these separate elements are, in fact, separate elements. Mmm, bubbles. 25 cents. Are bubbles coming from the end of the gun, or is that just... Uh, yes, end of the gun is producing bubbles. Neat. So, yeah... But yeah, uh, finishing a short story and then moving on to the next one. I've done a whole like novel-length book and published it on a, a KDP, Kindle Desktop Publishing. I don't recommend seeking it out. I mean, it's I think it's linked on the website, but it very much is the old way of... I mean, I started that thing when I was in school, or just after school, I think, and a bubble stand. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I started that thing after school and uh, it was basically I wanted to write cyberpunk, so I did just to see if it was possible. It uh, it took a while and I got it done and I was just like, right, it's done. It's now on KDP, whatever, I can forget about it. 
bubble stand, what, which bit's the sign we're not getting? Probably the top. Yeah, so I finished it, put it on KDP, and I was just like, phew that was done, but I don't ever need to think about this again, and I'll probably never touch writing again, because that was after Arv, and that was after it all. And I was just like, eh, it's a lesson. Bubble stand, plaque, okay, everything's done. So yeah, I finished the the actual full book. It was a full length novel, and I was just like, that's done, it exists, it probably needs a huge edit. In fact, I know it needs a huge edit, but at the time it was just like, well, how do I get this published? Oh, well, find an editor, do that sort of thing, and I was like, nah, nah, get it on, get on self-publishing, get it out, and just forget about it. Because it was such a pain in the butt to get a full-length story out. Uh, full length novel out and I was just like I don't think I ever really want to do that again to be honest um yeah it was, ugh, it was a pain in my bum so that was that was kind of it was good and bad I guess good in that it now exists in the world as a, a finished entity oh I should probably Probably lock this in. There we go. Lock the mouse wheel. Uh, it exists as an entity, but at the same time, it like the the the, the first novel I did was. Just, yeah. I could go back and edit it, but I don't think I will. Don't think I will. I think the time is is done for that. Uh, what do we got here? Got to make sure all of these are. Cleaned. There we go. Yeah, I think the time is done for that. So, moving on and doing short stories, it just feels much better, much uh, like much more rewarding because you can focus on something that's like between three thousand to seven thousand words. It's uh, it's much more focused, and there's been a lot of time since since that because I think I finished that in like twenty fifteen. Uh, and I've been working on that since school, uh, the, the the novel. And I was just like, yeah, the, there'd been so much time, so much had gone on in life. I like, started it before going to Arv and finished it after Arv, and I was just like, nah, maybe this is maybe this is not something I really want to do. But recently, as I've revisited short story writing, because I do like short story writing. I've written a few short stories for things like, uh, just popped on the Facebook feed. So it's like, I'm going to put this on the Facebook feed just, just to get something out there. Um, and people were like, yeah, I kind of like this. This is good. Carry on writing. I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's fine. Facebook feed for the family, not Facebook feed for, um, not Facebook feed for, uh, the channel. But yeah, it turns out after after just like a lot of time and uh, a lot of changes in life and just generally maturing as a person and yeah, the, the style of writing and everything has also changed and it, it just feels a bit more natural and it feels natural more natural to write horror than it does to write science fiction like weirdly uh, horror is not something that I would ever have gone into like horror is not something that fascinates me um, I know a lot of people have said oh on your YouTube channel, please play Outlast. And I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I'm not gonna play Outlast. I just, it doesn't, like I've seen a live stream of it. Uh, in fact, I saw Loading Ready Run do a live stream of it. And they spend a lot of time kind of screaming and going, ooh, it's scary. But it's a bunch of jump scares. And it's like the opposite of what I I, uh, I I look for on my games. Uh, you would not get the reaction from me that you think you're gonna get because I wouldn't be like scream because I want to go faster. I just I would get bored of it. Um, when I did the PT video for Christmas, I actually had to do it twice, which is why finding all the parts of the uh, of the picture was a lot easier. So I found all parts of the picture fairly quickly, if you didn't notice. That's because... Oh, wait a second. SpongeBob SquarePants. 
It's all coming back to me now. We did clean up last night. All right. Any more, my dude? Oh, he will. He'll, he'll carry on texting in a sec. Gary and I got our second win and tackled the stubborn stains and Patrick uh, sleep clean the rest with the reef blower. Go team. Okay. Uh, yeah, Outlast. So, um, like, for PT at Christmas, I I had to play that twice because I played it through once and just didn't didn't react. I was like, oh, I didn't actually react. I was just, like, playing the game and the ghost turned up and I was like, ah, oh, cool, this is kind of like Phasmophobia, whatever. Whatevs. I was like, uh, I should probably do this again. <laughs> I should probably do this again and just gonna react a little bit more because uh, this is not an interesting watch so yeah yeah that was a thing all right we're gonna need to get up there pick it up pop it down is that red there we go bring right i like bring uh let's go up there we go we can see what we're missing, and what we're missing is quite a bit. Let's clean the top of that. There we go. Uh, yeah, so I had to do PT twice. Ooh, there were some surprising bits in it when I played it through the second time, like having the baby talk to you. Uh, that was that was actually kind of surprising and interesting. I like interesting games, but um, I don't think there were any real jump scares in PT. Like, it's literally a player test. That's that's what the name uh, is implying. Oh. Look, we've got Spongebob's... Is that Spongebob's hand? Wait, what are... Because we're not Spongebob, but we have Spongebob noises. I don't know what's going on here. Um, yeah, so PT. I, I played that, and it was alright. It was fine. It was exactly kind of what I thought it was going to be wasn't turbo scary i already know there, there are some things in the pt demo so pt was uh going to be uh, silent hills and that was a game being developed by hideo kojima and and guillermo del toro had to remember that for a second so what happened was is they never made the game but they released a playable test or playable teaser and uh Hideo Kojima thought that people, because there was like a little secret there, and Kojima thought, oh, people are going to take a while to actually work out the secret. And it took them all of like, I think it was the same day, because he reckoned that, that people would get it in like two weeks. And I, I think it actually took like a single day or something. People people found it very quickly. And that's, that's the one where once you see the ghost, you walk up to it and there's like a baby... Well, yeah, there's a baby cry, then you get the ghost, and then you've got to wait for another baby cry, and uh, then you get the super, super secret ending. Because otherwise it just, like, dumps you out. So, uh, we managed to get that in the Christmas playthrough. So I got the, got the full, full experience, which is kind of neat. Pineapple leaf, pineapple leaf. That one's not done, that one's not done. So these two aren't done. Uh, these three aren't done. Okay, well, we'll do what we can and then probably just move around to the other side, I think. Uh, yeah, so I'd already played through and got the original ending, then I had to do it a second time to get the, the full ending and also do a little bit of reaction. It's like, I need to react, I need to be more... Because when you, when you play games on YouTube, or YouTube, people are expecting a certain amount of um, stuff. Je ne sais quoi. Or things like. Oh, are these ladders in the way? There. Or things like Stranded Deep. It's fairly straightforward because you're just playing the game and kind of reacting to stuff that's going on in the game. And that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what that game is. When it comes to uh, scary games, you're just kind of reacting to the scariness. Um, so I was watching someone actually play Outlast, and every time something happened, they jumped and screamed, and somebody was hiding behind a Snoopy doll, and I was like, "You guys, you guys okay? You guys real? <laughs> like, oh, I can't do that. I can't. 
I can't because I just don't have that energy in my body to scream at everything, scream and react at everything. So it's just like this is not. I'm not going to do it. I'm. I'm not going. I'm not going to try to play that kind of game because I just don't think I'd do it justice. Uh, these leaves are a pain in my butt. All right. Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Ah. Super Scoogum hidden section. Right. Can I get the window from up here? To the windows, to the walls. Hmm. Bonk. 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 Oh no, we fell, my lady. But did I get that? The porthole. Uh, there is a little bit. There we go. Dirt in there. Uh, lock that with. So. Mouse wheel to rotate it. I think, is it Q&E that can rotate it as well? I'm not sure. Ding ding. Uh, this is, these overlapping leaves are something of a pain in the bum. Ding. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, lock this out. Uh, ding, ding, right. That should be all of Spongebob's house. We can check. Uh, Spongebob's house. Bubble stand plaque. Clean. Uh, bubble stand container. 99%. Chimney. 89%. Oh, the chimney. Oh, yeah, we can see it from here. Mm, there we go. Chimney's done. Bubble stand container. That's interesting. Um, okay. Ding. Right. Okay. So, because uh, it's all divided into people's things. So, uh, bottom pineapple panel, 7 of 8. All right. Let's do this. 7 of 8. What is the bottom panel that's missing? It's behind. There we go. So, uh, clink and clean. Garage door alcove. Ah, right. That will be the recess. Yeah, there's a lot of butter dirt in there. Dumb. Okay, okie dokie. Porthole frames to a three. Porthole frames. Ah. It's on the top. It's probably on the bottom as well. Do that. Okay, I'll do that. So, yes. Uh, let's do what we got. Reef blower nozzle. Oh, the reef blower actually has separate sections on it. Okay, reef blower nozzle. Uh, oh, and the, the hose as well. Okay. Uh, okay. What else? Top pineapple, pineapple panel six of eight. Oh. Top pineapple panel six of eight. Oh, I see. They're right on the top. Hmm. Fine. Seven and eight. Seven. There's one more. Where are you? Oh, you're right there. How am I not? Oh, there we go. Right. So that's all of SpongeBob's house completely clean. It is Patrick's television. So rock, hinge, rock, underside, and rock are not done. Very importantly, uh, path is clean. Patrick's house lamp. Okay, I think I'll go and do that now. So there'll be everything in Patrick's house except for the bits that we need. Very important you don't try and clean the stuff if you don't have. Uh, Let's do this. In fact, let's do this with a stubby gun. And just uh, walk ourselves around sideways. What we got? Top of the lamp. Probably not the best thing for it. There we go. Lamp's done. Yes. Okay, so. Rock, rock hinge, and rock underside are not done. All of Patrick's stuff is done. SpongeBob stuff is done. Squidward's brow. Uh, doorknob is clean, so ears, head, nose, porthole frames, 
roof. Squidward's house steps. Oh. Right. Okay. We'll do that. Oh, get them clean. It'll be fine. So. Yes, you were talking about... Um, you were talking about... Oh, we're going to need that. Uh, grab you, put you... Here. Cool. Talking about writing another short story. So yeah, I've written a few short stories so far. And they are rewarding, to say the least. It's kind of fun doing them. It's nice because... Oops, uh, let's close that. R. Let's so rotate nozzle C to unlock the sprayer. Charlie C unlocks the sprayer. And uh, R rotates the nozzle. Cool. We're going to need to move this at some point, but sure. Uh, so yeah, writing short stories. It's it's much more rewarding than writing a full-length novel, I can tell you that for free. Um, if you get to a point where you think, this story is not going anywhere, or I, this is just a bad idea, you're not locked into it, you're not like 40,000 words in and think, oh, I have to rescue this. Nope. You can just be like, I'm... I'm 2,000 words in and this is not going anywhere. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna mug it off. And then you do. And you feel bad, sure, but... You know, you, you learn from the experience and you just move on. 2,000 words? That seems like a lot. It... I'm gonna let you into a secret. It kind of is, yeah. Uh, I mean, I started... So I started a new story. I basically got to my sister's, gave her... The, the current one, and she was like, yeah, I've read it, just some notes. Nice. And then immediately I came up with an idea for another one. I was like, oh. I didn't need the cooldown period. I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to get this written. And uh, banged out 1,100 words in, in an afternoon, which is kind of neat, actually. So got the like 1,100 words down. Some people... Say, oh, I've got, I've got, a, I've got an assignment, and I've, I've got to write 500 words, and I don't know how I'm going to do it. And I can understand that. Like when you have a blank piece of paper, and you're asked to write something, it's just like, how am I going to do this? It's, it's, it is, it kind of feels like a lot. The answer is, you just start at the start and just don't think about the word count until it becomes necessary. So just, just do it. And then eventually you'll find that, you know, half an hour, an hour has gone past and you've got 500 words down and it was like, oh, that took, mm, like, seemingly no time in my mind. What, what was I worried about? So, there we go. Yes, how do you come, uh, come up with ideas? Honestly, an idea from a story is, like, everyone's got ideas for stories. Uh, when I was working in an internet cafe, there was a guy that came in fairly regularly. He said, "Ah, oh, I've got, I've got an idea for a video game." And I'm like, "Cool. Learn to program and make the video game." Ooh, SpongeBob Square Pants. So, if the dirt was dealt with, but our houses were all filthy by the time we woke up, that can only mean one thing. Mm-hmm. We're off the hook. I don't think that's how it works, Albin. I don't think that's how it works. Okay. Um, so yeah, coming up with ideas. Uh, I think everyone can come up with ideas. That's that's the easy bit. You just sit around and think, oh, what do I want to write? It's not about... I mean, sometimes it's about what people want to read, but it's mostly about what, what do I want to do? What do I want to write? Oh, if you are creating a video game, what do I want to create? And it's uh, it's a case of if I don't have the skill to do it, or the skills, am I going to need to learn those skills? I'm going to need to, like, get educated or whatever? Sometimes that is the, that is the answer. Ugh, there's a little bit of dirt in there. There we go. But, yeah, what do I want to do? And sometimes the answer is uh, that you that, that is a that is the important question. That's the question only you, you can answer. Um, but yeah, that, that guy. I don't think he ever did get a video game published. 
the, the idea would be that you would uh, you would say, I have an idea for doing this. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. I have an idea for doing this thing. How how am I going to set about getting it accomplished? So for writing, you would just be like, well, pick up a pen, and paper, and start writing. Old chum, old bean. It's the only way. Or, if you're like me, do it on your phone, because it's in your pocket all the time. So Google Docs is really good. I don't like the cloud. Specifically, don't like the cloud for storing files on it. I don't like it. I don't like it when Windows goes, Oh, we're backing up on all data to the cloud! And I'm like, please don't ever do that. I'm going to stop that. If you try it again, I'm going to get upset. I'm going to dive into the registry and just start disabling parts of Windows. But when it comes to things like your mobile phone and writing, I think uh, there is a very valid reason for using Google Docs or whatever is similar. I guess Apple Docs? I don't know. Do Apple have a... I'm assuming Apple have like a cloud-based system that you can use to write on. I've never used an Apple... well, no, that's a lie. I have used an Apple device. I didn't like it. I... Oh, oh there's, a, there's a den of worms. Oh, I didn't like it. Did not like it. Is that... Oh, the porthole frame's done. I keep looking at it as if it's not. Oh, I'll grab you, move you over here. Uh, 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 there you go. Yeah. Ooh, you ever used an Apple before? Yeah, I have. I used an Apple laptop back in old work. Um, gee, gee, it was an, an experience. I think I know where it is. I think it still exists somewhere. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, I think it still exists somewhere. Uh, as in the machine. I think it's in a drawer at mum's place like literally nobody wanted it at work so I ended up trying to use it as a device it was one of these iMac laptop things and uh, yeah no I absolutely hated it I hated the the way that you only had a few years of support and then you couldn't update the operating system anymore like on Windows, you have quite a few years of support, and even when support is out, then they give you like security updates and stuff. This thing, this thing just stopped. It's like, oh, all right, cool. Glad to glad to see Apple really cares about you as a user, I guess. And then, uh, uh mm, beep. And then, uh, oh, I just. Yeah, I don't know. I think I just ended up using it as a, a thing to open, hold a door open. I mean, it was alright. It got a little too hot. I think it was like... Patrick's Rock, Hinge and Rock Underside. To do! Yes! Excellent! Cool! So that's that's the last thing we need. Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't super thrilled with it, if I'm going to be honest. Not super thrilled. It just... Uh, it just didn't... It didn't... It just didn't. Alright, so we can do the rock underside. So these last three things we need for the extra Chivo. So we've done everything else, and these three for the last Chivo. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. So, yeah. Um, writing coming along quite well, and everything else is... Oh, the star comes off. Oh, of course, yeah, Patrick would have been splat against the bottom of the rock. Um, yeah, everything else is just kind of... Resting is normal. I'm I'm having fun writing short stories. I think that's that's basically what it comes down to. Um, having fun writing short stories. Didn't have so much fun writing uh, full-length novel, and uh, not really into Apple products. There we go. Uh, prefer prefer basic Android, or love. I think it's Stockholm syndrome when it comes to uh, when it comes to Windows at this point. What else we got? So the rock underside is done. The hinge? Okay. It's a nice brass hinge, actually. Where would you choose brass? Brass is a weird... Yeah, brass is a weird metal. It is antimicrobial. Like, by default, it's antimicrobial. So, um, you have a lot of brass door handles in places like hospitals. Oh. Really? Yep. Yep. 
So we can do a lot of this while it is on its, in its open position, like the top and things. Oh yeah, we can just do the top while it's here. Neat! We can do it! Yeah, because I, I used to work in a school and we had the old part of school was all like the proper, proper school. And there was a lot of bits that like used to be outside, which were now enclosed in like outdoor walkways, which would like fully enclose. I think sometime during the 80s, they took this uh, like 1930s school building and just uh, just modernized it. But they modernized it in such a weird way. Like the building material from the 80s side of the building resisted drills and drill bits like nobody's business. And when we were putting the wireless system, ooh, you, you drilled about quarter inch into the wall and then the drill bit would stop. Hammer action fully like just nothing. I don't know what was in there. Like titanium, uranium, there was, I don't know, there was something in there that just did not want you drilling into it. But the old part of the building was made of granite, blue elven specifically, one of the toughest granites. It's probably, uh, probably left over from the mines. Boop. So, coming to the ding, hinges done. So we just need the rock. Uh, yeah, so getting getting Wi-Fi in the building was almost impossible and getting like getting anything installed was that was a nightmare we had to spend a lot we spent a lot of time like in the attic and in the attic was a huge empty zinc water tank it was uh, yeah it was like a history lesson going up there to run cat5 cables and the like but Time moved on, and I had to I had to leave that job. It was, it was all right for uh, for a while. And I ended up doing image editing, which is uh, yeah, it's a very different job. <laughs> it's a very different job. But doesn't AI do image editing? I mean, doesn't AI do writing? Yeah, but not very well. Uh, I think is the answer to all of that. But it'll get better in the future. Yeah, well, I mean. Sure. But not right now. Okay, so we just got this last little bit, and I hopefully we'll get two Chivos. One for doing one for doing the street. And one for doing the Patrick's house hinge and underside. So the rock, the rock underside and the hinge last. Yes, two. Naughty 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 nautical neighbours, and it's not a boulder, it's a rock. Both Chivo. Excellent. Excellent. In fact, what we could do is go but Mm, done 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 so yeah that's kind of neat done everything excellent so i'm gonna leave it there for the time being one of these rambling rambling little um non-vlog vlogs that the power happens to be but oh, there's a jellyfish i didn't even notice the jellyfish was squiggling around up there oh is that the thing that meows i hit a meow earlier did the jellyfish meow because it doesn't gary meows can we hit that with a no all right cool anyway yeah i'm gonna leave it there for the time being this is kind of a, a weird like non-vlog vlog situation but whatever we talked about a bunch of stuff and we clean got some stuff clean so if you like this video and you got to this point in the video and thought, oh, I'd like to see some more, definitely leave a little like. If you leave a subscribe, they both help and they both make you feel good by doing it. If you want notifications, think of the bingle. If you don't want notifications, don't click the bell and I'll tell you what, I'll catch you next time.